Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. And I have to say that this is a slightly special edition because we are going to be discussing, if not debating, the ultimate mystery, the ultimate question that man has been asking ever since he first acquired consciousness. God, the meaning of the universe, where has all of this come from? Now this week, science says it has discovered a new particle that some call the God particle. And again, that set that old debate going. Science versus religion, is there really a clash? Are we any closer to understanding the meaning of the universe? Are we any closer to understanding whether there was creation? And if so, who or what was the creator? And that's what we're going to be talking about in the big fight. And I have to say, I have a really, really fantastic panel. I can't think of too many better people to help us understand these mysteries. I'd like to start off by welcoming Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev, who's a spiritual guru, founder of the Isha Foundation. It's an honor to have you with us right here in the studio. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Dr. Push Bhargav, molecular biologist, has been studying this from the scientific side, uh, and we'll be fascinated to hear your views. Uh, Dr. Dominic Emanuel, uh, spokesperson of the Delhi Catholic Archdiocese, thank you so much for being with us as well. Professor Raja Raman is an Emeritus Professor of Theoretical Physics at the Jawaharlal Nehru University. Great to have you with us. Swami Atma Priyananda is the Vice Chancellor of the Ramakrishnan Mission Vivekananda University, who's done a lot of work on theoretical physics as well. So you'll perhaps be talking from both sides in this particular debate. It's great to have you with us. And uh, Shiv Vishwanathan, uh, one of the best, our best known sociologists, is going to be also telling us where does all of this fit into a societal uh, parameter. Uh, some say that man invented God or man created God for, for other reasons. And, and we'll be getting you to talk on that. Uh, Sadhguru, there's been so much interest this week that a God particle has been found. Now, I know the term is, is something which many find contentious. But again, it's made people wonder about the nature of existence itself. And science thinks that it has now come up with a standard model that explains existence. The scientists are becoming market savvy and media savvy. So a name like this, God particle, suddenly has got everybody's, grabbed everybody's interest. Otherwise, uh, for a lot of people in today's world, science means the next model of iPhone. That has been the idea of science. Once again, young people are interested to know what this is about. I see all the people around me being interested in particle physics <laughs> and fundamental physics like never before in the last three days, <laughs> which is a very good thing because science should be essentially seeking. Spiritual process is also seeking, essentially a human being seeking to know because wanting to know is not something that is infused by education. Wanting to know is a very natural state of human intelligence. I mean, the name is not suitable for what has happened. It doesn't matter, but it's grabbed people's interest and that's interesting and important for the world. <laughs> I, I guess Sadhguru's right, God particle is, is a bit more catchy than talking about leptons or quarks or even a boson, right? Even though the name in a sense originates from, from an Indian, but you know, it, it's, it's to that extent more catchy. He said that science is seeking, spiritualism <clears throat> is seeking. So to that extent, both are trying to find what is reality. Would you agree with that? And are we any closer to figuring out which of them is closer to the truth? I don't believe that we can synonymize science and spiritualism. I think they are two completely distinct approaches and not Different compared. approaches but seeking the same answer? Uh, that, uh, well, uh, that depends on what is the question that you are seeking to answer. Uh, uh, there are many ways, even religion all through has sought answers, same questions that science has. And when science has found the answers, they have been almost invariably at, uh, in contradiction to what religion has provided. But uh, coming to this question of the God particle, I think it's a complete misnomer. In, you know that uh, initially it was actually called God damn particle. Yeah. But the editor <laughs> removed the term. <laughs> and made it the God particle. The reason why it was, why some people still call it the God particle is because in a sense there's a view that what the Higgs boson actually does is it enables energy to create matter. It creates matter in a sense, so therefore it's, it's playing the role of, of creation. Now, I, I, I guess you would, you would disagree with that strongly. No, I wouldn't disagree because creation has started somewhere. And uh, even now, the readies, readers of the Bible do agree that the story given in the first chapter of the book of Genesis, that God created the universe one day by one day and on the last day he created human beings is not exactly how it is. But it is how those people perceived 
or understood the creation, that God created them that way. But now science is throwing more and more light on how creation came about. You are saying that, it, that God may have, God would have created man, God has created the universe. But Not exactly the in the same way as it is described in the Bible or in the, in the first chapter of Genesis. So even if there was a Big Bang or the Higgs boson is creating matter, that could, that's the hand of God working through the yes, Big Bang. Yes, that we would still agree because science, you see, is still struggling with this little particle, if, if I may say. And that still is uh, about matter. It is not yet even crossed the border of spiritual, spirituality or let us say spirit or soul. Now, after man or science has been able to throw some light on what this particle and matter and mass, etc., is, then our next task would be to try and explain what the soul is or what the spirit is or what is the function of the mind, okay. the intellect, where, where has that come from? And how does that function? Because right now they're struggling only with particle and with matter. Let me just go to you, Professor Rajaman. Uh, it is true that everybody wants to be a rock star and the physicists also. So the name God entirely came from that effort. It just doesn't belong here at all, uh, even in a remote extension of what you mean by God. So that I want to com dissociate myself from that name completely. Having said that, I would Professor say Higgs that... Also uh, hates it. Mm. Professor Higgs also hates the name God Particle. He didn't <laughs> like the term Higgs boson either. But that's, <laughs> well, that's, that's out, second is out of modesty, okay. but the first is out of good taste. <laughs> 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 All right, fine. <laughs> Swami Atma Priyananda? Uh, I completely agree with Professor Bhargav uh, because uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I was trained as a physicist, as a particle physicist before I became a monk. Many people have asked me, why did you become a monk after doing so much of physics? I said it is not in spite of it, it is because of it. Because so you're finding you, the you connection. Take, if you so, take so you're physics, finding the connection, sir, between uh, spirituality me, and, yeah, and let physics. Me, let me finish. So, uh, if you take physics very seriously, physics has taught me to look at the world very differently from or what our five senses look at the world. And when you talk about spirituality, vis-a-vis, -vis, not versus, vis-a-vis -vis science. I would say to put both of them together either synonymously or uh, coevally or saying that one leads to the other is vulgarizing both. Leave these two departments separately. And if science at some point leads to spirituality, we do not know, let it. But saying that this God particle and God created and there's a misstatement uh, scientifically Higgs boson does not create matter. So what Higgs boson does is facilitate the process. Scientifically, is to give masses to certain particles which are massive. Human beings, scientists do not yet know how particles acquire masses. There is a mechanism which Higgs suggested by which particles which are massless can acquire mass. This is a tremendous achievement in that uh, sense. And Higgs boson was not seen at that time. And our free people didn't believe that this could happen. If this could happen, this creates a tremendous revolution. There are three important things. One is about symmetry. Symmetry has been a very crucial concept in life itself, not, in fact, in science. The whole cardinal principle of physics is symmetry. Right. And symmetry comes from the idea of beauty, which is related to social sciences, humanities, arts, everywhere. And we believe nature is beauty, satyam, shivam, sundaram, we know that. And symmetry, according to physics, is related to conservation principles. Okay. So I'll come back to that. I'll, yeah, we will just come back to some of the, some of the details of this in, in, in just, just a couple of minutes. Shiva, I just want to get you in on this. Yeah. I must confess I plugged in physics at school. You know, I think it was lovely that this was a misnomer. Because I think what we saw was the gossip of science, the gossip of ordinary people caught in a beautiful conversation. Thank God there was misunderstanding. Otherwise, what would scientists and spiritualists do? I think the important thing is, look at the drama of the event. It was great that drama. man has found God. That's no. it. That's, I saw headlines no, no, saying man has no, no. found God. I was like, wow, that's nice. Yeah, but I know, thought it was a particle. And I think the beauty of this was the variety of questions asked. Okay. It, let's, let's enjoy the event. Okay. Because otherwise we start <laughs> acting like literary critics, <laughs> putting a grammar on the event. India's number one news app just got even better.
Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.